Hey, good morning, everybody. At least it's morning in San Antonio, Texas. I'm George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Uh, we are now at video number 99, one step away from my magical 100th episode. Um, <laughs> on that 100th video, I am finally going to answer the number one question we get from people from all around the world. I probably have seen this question come across my desk. I'll bet you five or six or seven hundred times. So um, that's what the hundredth episode is going to be, and I hope you get a chance to watch it. Uh, for those of you that ha that didn't know this, I've been on a two and a half month tour of Texas libraries, a speaking tour. I will be on the road for about another two weeks, so it'll be about uh, uh, it'll be two weeks before I can really get back to answering your questions. So I apologize for these videos coming over such a long period of time, but I have literally been on the road and just have not had a chance to sneak into the studio and get them shot. So anyway, uh, the 100th episode is coming up uh, probably in about a week. I'll, I'll be on the road for about another week. So hopefully a week from today, I'll be able to finally post my 100th episode. All right, let's dive into it. Evan from Huntington, Indiana. Evan says, if a Tyrannosaurus fought with a Parasaurolophus, would T-Rex win because Parasaurolophus has no weapons? Well, Evan, uh, technically, uh, Parasaurolophus does have a weapon, and that weapon is to run. <laughs> when that thing was uh, endangered, it would simply flee. It would run away. Now, it could use its tail. And if you look at the skeleton of a Parasaurolophus, you'll find that his tail is held pretty close to the level of the knee of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. That actually would make a very effective weapon to be able to literally knock the legs out from under a Tyrannosaur. And because Parasaurolophus's tail is stiffened by a series of bony tendons that interconnected each vertebra, that tail was kind of sort of like a baseball bat. So he did, in fact, have a weapon, but his number one thing would be to run. Um, Tyrannosaurus could not win every single time because if he would, that would mean that he would literally eat himself out of existence. If you look at modern predators today, you find that most of them are unsuccessful about 80% of the time. So my guess would be that Tyrannosaurus would have a very difficult time getting close enough to a Parasaurolophus because I'll bet you Parasaurolophus' sense of smell was pretty incredible. He could probably hear, see, or smell a Tyrannosaur well in advance. So I would guess that it would be a difficult thing for Tyrannosaurus to ever catch a Parasaurolophus. But if in fact he did, well then yeah, Parasaurolophus couldn't stand a chance once Rex got those massive teeth in him. All right, uh, I think I'm pronouncing this correctly. Uh, Keo from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Keo, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. If I'm not, uh, write back to me and let me know what the pronunciation is. He says, hi, George. I have just one little question for you. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I see one video where one guy opens up a T-Rex fossil and found blood. Uh, blood marks appear only in fossils at the most at about 100,000 years. Is that right? He said, thanks and have a good day. P.S. Sorry for my bad English. Uh, K.A.O., your English is absolutely fine. I understand completely what you're talking about. What you saw was a video once on, I believe, the Discovery Channel where um, there was claims that they had found dinosaur DNA, recoverable DNA, inside the bone of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, at first, I was absolutely stunned by it. it. It was amazing to think that that would be possible. But if I understand correctly, I think that that has been disproven. I think that what they determined was that was not, in fact, dinosaur DNA, uh, but it was something else. Now, I, I do not know for certain about that. I read all of the information about the original discovery, but I don't know whether or not that was truly verified or if in fact they had something else. Um, and you're correct, really it's very difficult to find recoverable DNA for anything older than let's say even 10,000 years. Uh, you get back 10,000 years, it starts to become difficult. So um, I believe, I, I believe, and I hate to say that, but I think that it, it, it was disproven that somebody claimed that that wasn't the fact. Uh, if anybody out there knows about it, please send me an email, let me know. I'd certainly be interested in finding out. All right, Carlos from Miami, Florida says, what was the fin of Spinosaurus made of? That's a great question, Carlos. We know that the main risers that came off was made of bone. Those are extensions on its back vertebra. That's solid bone. What was in between that is a mystery because whatever it was, either we've not found any evidence to claim what it was 
uh, or that stuff doesn't fossilize. Some people believe it was skin, like, the, like a sail. Um, some believe it may have been sort of a thin keratin covering. We just don't know for sure. My best guess would be that it would be skin. And the reason why I say that is because it would have to be somewhat flexible. It couldn't be, I don't believe it would be really tough, hard, and rigid because I think that would almost impede his ability to move to, to a degree. So my best guess would, would be that it was flexible skin, but uh, nobody really knows. We do not know for certain. All right, Benjamin from St. Lawrence, Barbados. Uh, Benjamin says, what killed Dunkleosteus? Well, Dunkleosteus is a giant fish that lived, I think, during the Devonian period. I think he's Devonian. I'm almost sure he's Devonian. Um, we don't know. You know, there was a big extinction event that occurred at the end of the Devonian period that took out a lot of animals. Um, it must have been, as best I can tell, it must have been something global. It must have been a big shift in the environment. I think throughout the history of life on Earth, we see these dramatic environmental shifts where suddenly uh, places that were hot may now become cold, places that were cold may now become hot. Almost um, the whole world kind of turns upside down, so to speak. And I think that it was probably an environmental change that caused the extinction of this thing. There was a couple of other of these armored, armor-headed um, giant fish that also went extinct. So Benjamin, my best guess would be that it must have been uh, something environmental and it may have disrupted the food chain. And because Dunkleosteus was a big, bad dude, when you're really big, you need a lot of food. And when your environment changes, you're usually the first one to suffer. So that's my best guess. All right. Um, finally, I think this is pronounced Harrisoni from Paris, France. Harrisoni, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Again, if I'm wrong, I apologize. He says, hello, DG. How are you? Harrisoni, I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, he says, I hope you are doing good. I am, man. Thank you very much for asking. He says, I've got a question. If dinosaurs are alive, if dinosaurs were alive today, could we play with them? Could we feed them, etc.? He said, thanks for your time. Well, Harrison, that's a cool question. You know, yeah, if dinosaurs were alive, some of them probably would have made interesting pets. I mean, we can keep animals like birds. We can keep dogs. We can keep cats um, as pets. We keep a lot of exotic animals as pets. Dinosaurs, some would have made very good pets. Now, I would have suggested, I would suggest that you would only want to keep these small herbivores. Some of the predators might be a little bit nasty, but you know, again, we also keep uh, predatory lizards and some people keep snakes as pets. So yeah, you could keep them as pets. Um, I think that uh, some of the big herbivores like Triceratops and Stegosaurus and those guys, they may have kind of sort of had the temperament of modern cows. And once they became used to you and they realized you were the one that was going to feed them and take care of them, then they probably wouldn't see, they probably wouldn't be as aggressive. Now, of course, this is all just speculation. There's no way of knowing this. Um, certainly, there were some dinosaurs that you just could never tame. And I believe some of the big predatory dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus and Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, Dilophosaurus, Crylophosaurus, uh, Giganotosaurus, Epantereus, those guys, I don't think there's any way on Earth we could ever get closer than they would just be too big. But certainly, I do think it would be cool to keep some of the smaller herbivores as pets. I think they would have been cool, like Cetacosaurus would have been kind of a cool pet, I think. Uh, the Sothosaurus, I'll bet you Protoceratops. I bet some of those would make really cool pets. All right, you guys, listen, if you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Keep in mind, we literally get thousands of these questions every single week, and there is just no way we can answer them all. So if you've written to me and I've not posted your question, I apologize, but the people that go through these questions just go through them randomly and look for questions that they think are interesting that haven't been asked over and over again, and those are the ones that they generally hand me to go over. All right, uh, take care of yourselves, everybody. Take care of yourself. Take care of the people around you. Um, for you young people, I don't have to say it because you know what it is, but I'll say it anyway. Practice your manners and practice your reading. Please have good reading skills and always, good use, uh, always use good manners. Until next time, everybody, take care. I'm looking forward to posting that 100th episode. It's coming very soon. See you guys.